Okay, well, hopefully this is on. Um, all right, yeah, I'm Lucy. I am hail from the great state of Maine in the US, um, which is well known for Stephen King, mostly. Um, I'm actually pretty tired of you know, hearing about Stephen King. Um, but yeah, and I, um, I was raised in Brooklyn, Maine, um, not Brooklyn, New York. Uh, and yeah, um, I loved it. I was raised out on the water. It was amazing. Um, but I'm here to talk about accessibility. So uh, when I was in preschool, I was standing on one of those swivel chairs, um, and my teacher said, Lucy, don't stand on that. You're going to fall. And I said, I'm not going to fall. That's how I broke my cheekbone. Um, so now you know something super embarrassing about me, um, that I am absurdly stubborn, um, that I'm not that graceful, uh, <laughs> um, and that I am now disabled. Well, I was back then as well, but you now know I'm disabled. Um, and that's really shaped who I am. And fast forward to college. Um, I came in as a physics major um, at Siena College, which is upstate New York. Um, a lovely school, l great physics program, a lot of research opportunities. Um, loved it. That was my first, uh, my first laptop, believe it or not, um, and my first phone, right up there. It's an iPhone 5. I'm very young. Uh, <laughs> 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 Remarkably, uh, this is this conference is 16 years old. Yes. I was seven when this conference was founded. So, Why would you, keep it? <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> I was kind of preoccupied with a couple different things, you know? Um, so yeah, that was my first two devices that I owned. It was very exciting. Um, I love them both very dearly. I still have both of them, and they still somewhat work. The phone, if you like are making a call while it's plugged in, it'll shock you a little bit. <laughs> it still works. <laughs> Um, but I loved it, and my first semester, freshman year, um, I got my first phishing email, um, and I had never seen these things before, and uh, where I'm from, you know, they come over to your house, and they're like, the trees block the internet, so you can't get that, um, so that was an interesting, uh, transition, so the phishing email um, had a link in it, and of course, links are made for clicking, as Ed said. <laughs> um, and so I clicked on it, and it asked me for my email and my password. You know, um, so, so I you know, filled it out, um, pressed submit, and nothing happened. So uh, with my logic, I did it three more times. <laughs> Maybe something would happen. Um, but lo and behold, uh, my account got locked by my school for malware. And um, shocker about that. Um, and I had to, if you, in my school, um, if you responded to these phishing emails or fell victim to them, as I did, um, you had to take a three hour long course on phishing emails and security. Uh, I did not want to do that. Um, and so I found a loophole where I could apply to my IT um, department at college. Um, and I did, and I got in, and they unlocked my account. I mean, I had to work at an IT help desk in college, so I really played myself um, at the end of the day. Uh, but 
I loved it. I loved the time I had. I ended up managing that group. It was amazing. Um, so that's how I got into IT. Fast forward two IT Google internships later, um, I'm in my IT residency, and I dropped out of school in order to do so. Um, and I stumble one day upon this user who I'm helping. Um, the IT residency program is all surrounding internal IT. So we uh, meet Googlers every day, fix their tech issues, and um, get to meet people from all around the world. But so I, this one day, I got this user who was blind. And he was having trouble with his screen reader um, and blare, uh, braille display. So that is a braille display. It's a nifty piece of hardware where basically it takes what's on the screen, the text, converts it to braille. Pretty, pretty nice, right? Um, kind of important if you are blind or visually impaired. Um, and I was like, oh, OK, this is, this is cool. So I started uh, researching about it. And turns out they start roughly around 2,000 US dollars, um, which I was like, well, that is absurd. Um, because if you're a kid and you need this in order to learn, and on top of that, you need a computer, that is just absurd. Um, I couldn't believe that. And so from that point, I started um, my chapter in the accessibility team at Google, um, along with Ed. And um, I kind of got involved in just making other Googlers' lives more comfortable, um, and other people with disabilities just a little bit more comfortable. Um, and I've worked with a lot of, a lot of teams at Google. Um, and what I figured out with accessibility is that it's usually just an afterthought. And that, that bothers me a little bit. Because yes, like I'm, I'm in a company that does amazing things every day, rolls out the best of the best. Um, but um, usually, it's either we can roll this out to help a lot of people or focus on the disabled individuals. Um, and I decided that I didn't want it to be an afterthought. Um, so this is why I'm presenting to you today, just so we can make together the world just a little bit more accessible. And the key is to start simple. Um, it doesn't have to be big. Um, just accessible meetings and documentation um, and documents like can go a long way. Uh, I, let's see, in one of my first days at one of my jobs, I was in training for accessibility, which is awesome, you know, training for accessibility, great. Um, they had a lot of, in, they had a lot of tools to help with people who are disabled. Um, I'm colorblind, um, red, green, and I, I raised my hand and I asked, what about people who are colorblind? Do you have any tools for them? Um, and they said, oh, like, we wouldn't have like a web page that said, press green to live and press red to die. And that kind of made me <laughs> a little bit frustrated. Um, but the ironic thing is, the next thing that they said, play, pay close attention to the red on the slide. And <laughs> so I was like, this is, this is awesome. So just using colors in order to um, just get your point across. I know it's amazing. Like Using so many colors is great. Um, especially Google, we're so, we're so in tune with colors. Um, so I actually made this presentation very deliberate, where it is white in the background and black text. Um, and that is so there's no issues with colorblindness. 
and also the text, if dyslexia is a, is a big concern, um, the text is sans, and that's usually a safe one. Um, and just keep contrast in mind. I, I put a little, little image in there where pretty much what not to do and what to do um, in terms of color and contrast. Um, include lat navigation landmarks in your documents is always a big thing because I don't know if you guys have ever tried a, a, like a screen reader, even a built-in like voiceover. Um, it, is, it is really tough. Um, I was gonna do a demo on um, using screen reader voiceover and I, I, I ordered like a lot of off-brand Apple earbuds from Amazon. Um, and I kind of didn't feel comfortable with the chance that they probably could like, you know, start a fire maybe. Um, <laughs> I really didn't feel safe, but if you want a pair of off-brand Apple headphones, please come talk to me because I, you know, brought them over here and now I have a bunch of headphones. Um, and if you want to try voiceover, great, like do it. It's awesome to go through any web page and to see what it's like to have to deal with that on a daily basis. Um, it can be very frustrating. Um, the first time I tried voiceover, it was just, it was incredibly frustrating just to um, get down the commands and everything, but yeah, so just keep navigation landmarks in mind. Um, share a presentation and HTML view. I did not, um, but it, it is better for screen readers. And yeah, choose fonts carefully. So that's one way you can make your coworkers, your employees, and just your users a little bit more comfortable. It was, it's pretty simple. Fonts, colors. It's very straightforward. So that's starting simple. And if you're supporting users, oh, I'm really big on memes, so um, there might be some sprinkled in. Um, if you're supporting users like me, um, be empathetic. I had to learn very quickly to be patient because there's no silver bullet, or there rarely is. Everyone is different, everyone is diverse. Um, and their issues, you might not see it, like it might be one issue here, one issue there, and they need to find a configuration that fits them. Um, so do your research on everything that you could provide for your users. Um, it would be the best uh, advice that I could give. Uh, I spent a lot of time doing research on all the software and hardware that's out there. Um, and test out software and hardware. Just test it out. Just see what you can do with it. Um, see what your users have to do with it. Uh, and yeah, one size does not fit all. You'll find a lot of diversity in what you do. If you're coding, and I found this, I actually, yeah, please do not do this. <laughs> please. <laughs> um, this is a terrible website. Uh, I'm sorry for whoever built it. But um, yeah, it's, uh, I just looked up uh, terrible website design. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> that's it. Um, and uh, that's, that's pretty much a, uh, a like horrible thing if you're using a screen reader. That is the worst of the worst. You have like boxes over there and like, just a bunch, it's, it's terrible. Okay, anyway. Um, coding for accessibility also creates good habits with coding. Um, a lot of people are like, you know, I really want to get more accessible with my projects. I really do. Um, but there's already so much that I've done. It's hard to have to go back and go back in that old code and redo it. Um, my best advice is, yeah, you could do that eventually, or you could, from here on out, just keep in the back of your mind. Um, 
learn about the accessibility features, especially with Objective-C and Swift. Um, there's Accessibility Activate and all the accessibility functions. Apple has an amazing documentation on this. Um, and that should probably be your best friend if you want to get into more accessibility. Um, also for web development, there's Accessible Rich Internet application. Um, and that could just be a saving grace. Just look it up, take some time. Um, it will definitely save you. And probably one of my favorite things that I've seen so far with accessibility is be perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust if you're doing a product-facing um, integration with accessibility. So, and testing. Testing's always good. Um, it's essential if you want access, um, exceptional accessibility. Uh, Apple has one of the best built-in accessibility, uh, accessibility features. Sorry. Um, there are a lot of them. Use them. Try them out. And if you don't have the tools to test accessibility, or you're questioning the accessibility on your, of your product, Google it. There are tons of accessibility tests out there. Tons. Like, you would not believe. Um, so yeah, start somewhere. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be take a whole lot of time. Just start somewhere. Um, even if it's creating an accessible meeting, um, you don't know what's going on with anyone. Um, you have no idea what's, what's it like to be in their shoes. Um, so start somewhere. And it starts with you. Uh, I, when I came into the residency program, I wanted to fix everything. I wanted to fix everyone's issues. But then I realized that it just starts with me. It starts with doing one thing every day in order to make it a little bit better in the world. Um, I have a bunch more time, but yeah. Um, any questions? Reach out to me. Want to see these slides? Reach out to me. Uh, want, need some resources? Uh, I will gladly point you in the right place. I am not a master of accessibility in any regard, but I do know how to Google things. So that's probably good. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, just reach out to me. Questions, concerns, want to talk about anything. Yeah.